Shut the door. Bobby, shut, shut that a second. Guys, I'm just going to tell you a couple things here. Let me, let me kind of collect my thoughts, and we'll get together this afternoon sometime. But I want to tell you one thing. I've never, ever been as proud as a group of guys as I've been as you guys this year. Even today, you guys kept fighting, kept fighting. You played a great third quarter. You know, we come out, and we, we could have done that for four quarters, but that's tough to do against a team like that. OK, seniors. All four of you, you know, a lot of the reason of our success two years ago was our seniors. A lot of the reason for our success this year is you guys. I'll never forget it. The juniors and underclassmen, we get to come back and we get to do it again. You guys brought us where nobody else could. I appreciate your efforts. Okay? Get your shadows. Great job. I'm very proud of you. If you talk to a lot of Hoosier basketball fans these days, they're going to tell you the game's different. They're going to tell you the kids have changed. They're going to tell you the game's more urban. All they want to do now is shoot the three, dribble between their legs, slam dunk. The game's changed just like it has in high school, just like it has in college and pros. The kids don't want to practice shooting. They want to practice three-point shots. And if they can dunk shots, they want to they want to do crossover dribbles and behind the back dribbles. They're too fancy. There's no, there's no basics anymore. There's no free throw shooting. There's no real field goal shooting. They just want to dunk if they can or shoot a three pointer and that's it. So I guess, yeah, the basics have, have, have left it. You know, it seems like our basketball nostalgia really starts with Bobby Plump. And I think it ends about the time we all quit playing when we were kids. I think basketball to me was a heck of a lot more important than it is to these kids nowadays. Whenever we were kids, basketball was it. That was all there was, was basketball. Today, there, there are so many other things for the kids to do today that they don't, they don't take the interest that we had in it back in the 70s. Ah, they went, they went, they went, they went. Well, history's being made every day. Kids still bust their butts to be champions, or believe it or not, just to be the best they can be. But after this year, the game the rest of the world identifies with Indiana will disappear. And you can't blame the kids this time. The principals have voted 220 to 157, which represents 57.1% of the IHSA membership of 385 schools. The timetable would call for implementation in the 97-98 school year in the team sports. You know, this time it was a bunch of old guys tampering with tradition. Imagine that. Our state attorney that other states have looked to as an example, the thing that's inspired movies and it's made kids strive to be their very, very best, has been axed by cold bureaucrats. Was it that simple? Well, probably not. And do we really like it? Well, like you're going to find out. Folks where I'm from, no, nah, not really. I found a few who do, but they're not very passionate about it. We're on Main Street in Petersburg. It's the county seat of Pike County and where I like to call my hometown. Most people see Petersburg probably on their way from Evansville to Indianapolis, south of Dairy Queen or something. It's been sort of a tough decade or so for Petersburg. We've seen a lot of coal mines close. And a tornado came down Main Street and wiped out a lot of people. Despite the tornadoes and the disappearing coal mines, Petersburg's pretty much stayed the same. It's a proud town, proud of its history and the people who live here. But like hundreds of other towns in Indiana, progress seems to be passing it by. And change doesn't come easy in this part of the world. Heck, back when I was in school, the three major communities in Pike County, Petersburg, Winslow, and Otwell, decided to consolidate their schools. That caused somewhat of an uproar. And everybody thought at first that, you know, we were just going to be superpowers, but it took a while for the community to sort of adjust. I remember the first few years down here, we had a section where the Winslow people sat, a section where the Otwell people sat, and a section where the Petersburg people sat. I mean, it was obvious. As a matter of fact, I even had a lady come up and tell me one time, she said, no wonder you don't have a good basketball team out here. 
There's nobody from Standale played. And I, <laughs> and I honestly didn't even know that we had a kid from Standale on it because I was just, you know, to me, it was like simple kids. We're inside the old Petersburg gym. This was my home when I was a little boy. My dad coached at Petersburg High School. And I was here all the time watching his teams or trying to perfect my jump shot. My first game that I played in was in this gym. It was during the halftime of a varsity game. There's 2,000 people here, and we all ran out here. We were nervous, and we had on our nice red shorts. Somebody tipped me the ball, I think the opening tip, and I dribbled down and made it in the basket, and people went crazy. It was in the wrong basket, but I'd made a basket, and I was hooked. Basketball meant a lot to me from that point on. The best thing consolidation did for me was that I got to play ball with some great players from all over the county. We gelled as a team and went on to some notoriety. People expect you know come here to watch dunks every once in a while. Back then, of course, the rule was that you couldn't do it, and we wouldn't let you. Right. Uh, because you say, hey, if it goes in, it's two points. Don't matter if you stuff it. Uh, I've seen it change there a little bit. Now, remember, my, Ted got our first dunk. Yeah, I will never that? forget that in the section as long right. as I live. That, that was, was pretty uh, cool. Yes, it was. I I, I, tell, I think I got an assist on that. I tell people about that. Matter of fact, I'll never forget that game as long as oh, I live because we should have probably. We won't talk about no. that. No, I'm not. Uh, we led by two with 15 seconds to go, got a terrible call, and uh, the kid goes to free throw line for a one and one and you yelled across the line to Ted to make sure he blocked out, and so the guy shoots the free throw, misses, Ted rebounds the ball, gets the ball over to Tim, Tim's going down the floor as hard as he can, the referee blows the whistle, stops the game as we cross half court and says, these guys were talking while he was shooting. We're going to shoot another one and one Anyway, we come down in with uh, <clears throat> 11 seconds. He hits them both, and uh, we run our wing post play. And uh, uh, goes to Ted Clips. He turns and shoots in one second to go. The ball goes in. Pandemonium. Now I start celebrating because I'm thinking he's saying the game's over. And instead he runs over to me and he says, Coach, that shot's no good. And I said, but um, it was John Bush, a name I will never forget. John, John Bush said, Coach, I'm the referee, and I've got the final say. Whether I saw it or not, we're going over. And so then the next day, the Washington newspaper has the picture in the paper with Ted shooting one second on the clock and the ball's out of his hand. So we say that that team at Pike Central was uh, the team that was never defeated because we had four starters out or three starters and our sixth man out when we played those two regular season games. And we beat Lagodi, and we're looking forward to a rematch with Washington and Steve Bushy, Mr. Basketball. And even today, I think we would have beaten them. I just moved back to Pike County. I've been living in New York and Los Angeles for the last decade or so. I'd pretty much forgotten about high school basketball, let alone have the type of memory my ex-coaches have. Then one day I bumped into an ex-teammate of mine, and he was going on about this year's Pike Central team, and he was going, Brick, these guys are almost as good as we were. They could probably even win a sectional. And that got my attention, because no Pike Central boys team has ever won a sectional. Why? Um... I don't know that there's any one reason you can pinpoint. Well, I've been here ever since, either in the line of an assistant coach, middle school coach, varsity coach. Now this is my 10th year as AD. We never have won a boys section. Uh, we've been in the final game, I think, maybe three or four times. Girls basketball, we very successful. Been to Simmons State six times. But for us boys, matter of fact, we're saving us special spot in this gym for a boy's picture, and I'd like to see that before I'm done as athletic director. I do know one thing, that if we can get that first one, just as we did in girls, I think the next ones will be easier. They seem to be an enthusiastic team. That's that's good, because they they have to kind of battle the, the stigma Pike Central has. Of, they've had bad teams. They have, they've had some good teams in the past, but never a really successful team in postseason. They've had some successful seasons, but but that that winning tradition just isn't there in postseason, and that's why I'm a little leery of, of this tournament, too. I think we have the best team, but we don't have the, the winning tradition, and it might hurt them. No, there was some periods of time, because you guys went through great years there, you know, 18-3 and three that one year, and uh, we had a couple, of, you know, 12, 13 seasons, and then when Coach Wall the last three years here, hey, it's back, they expect us to win. And uh, we had a, we won 14 games last year, and people were thinking we had a little bit of a, a, a bad year. Right. And uh, uh, so this year, you know, we've got a chance to, to maybe hopefully win the sectional, maybe win 20 games or more, which we've never done before. 
Right. So uh, we're looking forward to, to that. I started going to a few games, talking to people. I started to realize that the success of a few kids is pretty important to a small community like Pike County. You know, this is Indiana, and basketball means a lot to us. When you start messing with it, people are going to complain a little bit. That's what I tell the kids. When you pull a Pike Central jersey over your heart, you know, you've got to believe in it. And uh, I play with a lot of emotion. I get excited. I get tears in my eyes when a school song comes on. You know, that's just part of being out there and being in the crowd. And uh, I'm lucky to be involved in the program. As far as finances, when we have to change from something that seems to be working pretty well right now, we're a little concerned because obviously our boys' basketball program uh, throughout the season and in the tournament revenue from it supports every other sport here at this school. And right now we are financially sound in our athletic department. And the big reason for that is uh, that our boys' basketball program has been successful and of the tournament revenue. So when they talk about switching, that concerns us. I think they're going to lose a whole bunch of money. That's the main thing that the administrators are looking at. They're going to lose a whole lot of money. There are going to be so many people unhappy with it. Maybe they'll think, think it over and, and, well, when I think about that, no. No, they won't think it over and go back. I think they could. I think it would be welcomed back, but I don't think it'll happen. You know, losing any time is no fun, but when you're a senior in high school and you lose a game in a sectional, there's a finality to it that's kind of overwhelming. At Pike Central High School, most of us know what it's like to lose a sectional. There is one guy who knows what it's like to win as a player. Well, I had a good career. I played at Heritage Hills High School, and uh, we capped our, our, my career off with my senior year with winning the first uh, sectional in the school's history in, in any sport. And uh, Heritage Hills, uh, I think, started about 1972 or three, and this was in 1980. So it took them seven or eight years to get that first sectional. And then uh, after we got that one, it just snowballed, and Heritage Hills became real successful and won a bunch of sectionals. I had met Coach Wall when I was in school. He was the star player on one of our conference rivals. You're shook, all right? So just keep our composure, keep taking it out. You know, we're all closet coaches here in Indiana. You know, if you go out to a Pike Central game, you get the idea that the top basketball minds in the county are in the stands, not on the floor. I'm guilty of that. I remember watching the Chargers for the first time, and I didn't know if I agreed with what Brian Wall did, but I didn't know the kids, and it's real easy to stand back and say, that guy doesn't know what he's doing. And when you get close to a situation, then you see how the potential's being used. You know, you, you put 3,000 people in here to watch a game, and, and uh, everybody, uh, you know, knows what you should be doing, what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right. And uh, but as a as a coach, I try not even to think about that. What I try to do is just uh, sit down and watch film and, and try to prepare myself the best I can, get the kids prepared, do what I think is right. And I think my with my background in, in basketball and. and uh, people I've uh, played under and coached with, things like that, I think that, uh, that I can get a team prepared. And if me and my coaching staff do what we think is right, that's it. You know, it doesn't matter what other people think. Having to hear maybe some things that I don't appreciate hearing um, from the crowd. They don't do that as much anymore because now that they know me better since I've been in the area and working in the school corporation more, they know how I feel about that, that I don't appreciate it, and that I am not the coach. He's the coach, and it's not my place, and I would never try to tell him. We, we review the, the, and he hears my opinion, but I would never express someone else's viewpoint to him. One of my assistants works, uh, as you know, at a car dealership, and uh, I think he gets more of that than I do, because he's out there in the community all the time, and people are going to come in and tell him what they think. But That's Saturday, we had a guy come in and tell us that uh, he thought we should have fired the whole bunch of them, fired the whole bunch of the team. I said, you do? I said, uh, would you even fire number 13, which is Adam's number? He said, well, maybe we'd play around him. But So we had you know, different ideas on things. But uh, and, and this, this guy was teaching me he's an old timer. I said, well, some of you old timers, you know, they don't understand the way we play or, or you know, maybe how come we have sites bring the ball down the floor all the time. I hear, you know, some things like that. You know, I really enjoyed uh, working with Coach the last couple of years. I worked with uh, our uh, varsity girls coach before that. and. And uh, he's real strict and real controlled, and, 
and Coach is real. He's real loose and lets the kids play, and it's been a lot of fun. I met Brian again when I had the idea to do this movie, and I was a little nervous going up to him because here I was going to say, can I, can I come into your guys' world you know, intimately for the next couple weeks? Well, I met this quiet, confident man who had a lot of respect for his players and knew that they could handle the fact that there's a guy with a movie camera chasing them around. They want a good basketball team, but they want me teaching them uh, uh, things that they're going to be able to use on in life, like teach them when you, when you go away from Pike Central, you represent your school uh, well, which our kids do all the time. Uh, they know how to handle themselves. They've talked to you a lot. I'm sure they're able to give some good interviews and things like that that I think is going to help them as they graduate from Pike Central and move on. These mints are good luck. We always eat mints. I started following these guys around during the last week of the regular season. The end of a regular season that had them 17 and 3, and very much the favorite going into the last single class Southridge sectional. But this time, the tournament pairings had already been announced. The Chargers knew who they were to play, and it would seem pretty easy to look past the last game at Boonville and to concentrate on the big prize of a sectional championship. Hey, we can do it. We're good enough to do it. We should do it. We are going to do it. And uh, that helped. And then the Boonville, what the Boonville game did, it, it just supported that because we got down, we played from behind all night long, and the kids came up with a great effort at the end and, and won it at the end. And it just seemed to pull us all together like, hey, this is it. We're going to do it. We're going to win, whatever it takes. Josh and I both talked, and we said, we told him how it was going to be. You know, we're going to get these kids together. Uh, if we're gonna win that sectional, and that was a, that was really the only thing we were focusing on. Really, was sectional at that time. Jim Duffy, principal of Boonville High School, and uh, uh, I voted to uh, to make no changes. Uh, I've coached at a small school, and I've watched uh, I've watched some exciting tournaments here in this in this arena. Uh, and we'll have a wonderful tournament this year. Last year, one of the smallest schools in the uh, in the field could have won it. I think they they got beat one point last year. So uh, I don't know. The Hoosier hysteria was at its best last year, and I, I think this this next week's section will be the same thing. Everybody, that your parents need to come get their tickets from eight to twelve tomorrow. All right. If they don't come in from eight to twelve, from twelve to whatever six, however long Mr. Lemon stays here, uh, that's open to all season ticket holders, and. Tickets may be gone by tomorrow at 6 if all the season ticket holders come in to get them. My name is Mark Wells. I'm 18 years old. I'm Josh Lee. I'm 19. I'm a senior. My name's Kenny Powell. I'm a senior here. Uh, I'm Eric Gladish. I'm 18 and I'm a senior. I'm Craig Wiseman. I'm a junior. I'm 17 years old. Uh, my name's Adam Seitz, uh, junior, uh, 16 years old. BJ Murphy. How old are you? I'm 16. Jared Thomas. I'm 17. I'm Josh Flint. I'm a junior. My name's John Quarry. I'm 16. Chris Davis. I'm 16. I'm Chris McCallis. I'm 16 years old and I'm a sophomore at Pike Central. Ryan White. How old are you? 13. This is this is clean a good group of kids. They do well in school, most of them. And uh, uh, they're not any troublemakers. Uh, we don't have any, hopefully, we're not going wood. We haven't had any real major discipline problems with them, so. Nice, I will hope a good chance nice kids will finish first. I, I just simply asked him if uh, we should sing in our uniforms or, or we should wait or, you know, because I'm, I'm planning on being out there in, you know, number 35, Pike Central, singing my, singing the national anthem. the boys state finals because we were chosen out of a bunch of choirs <laughs> to go up there and it's a really big honor for us. I think I'm the biggest high school basketball fan in the world and to, to be, to get a moment in the sun so to speak in front of 40,000 people and get to lead the choir, I think that's real special. About a, almost a three year process we went to, uh, we sang for the girls final uh, about three years ago and immediately after we came back from that I went ahead and submitted an application and they'd already had a videotape of us uh, for 
the boys' final game, and this year, for some reason, they chose us. I mean, I'm glad they did because it's going to be probably the last time we'll be involved with this particular one like this, and the kids are really excited about it. The state, you know, we all dream about it. We go, I go to state every year, you know, just to see it. And, and I don't know if, if I'm going to go to state next year to watch single A teams play. I might. Um, I just don't, I just can't, it just to me is, I just seen it sad that, just like our meeting last Saturday we had, or last Monday that we had for the sectional meeting, we all toasted our tea to the end of an era, to the end of the South Ridge sectional, because that's it. We're never, us schools will never be together again. I've, I've had so many people this year that I had no idea, no clue who they were. They'd come up, say hi, how's it going? Uh, thought you did this good, that good, and how's this guy, that guy, and stuff like that. And tell your mom and dad I said hi, stuff like that. We also feel like we don't have anything to lose because we never won one. You know, we're gonna go all out. We're going to be fired up. Um, Intensity is going to be there. <laughs> I think it's a real important sectional. Everybody's going to want to win since uh, it's the last one. So everybody's going to be out to get it. Now we really think we got a chance. I mean, we're working hard all the time. We're, we just have, this, is a, this is our last chance to win. As teams start to get ready for the tournament, they're faced with all sorts of distractions. Levels of attention and anticipation that few kids are used to. And we always, each year, interview each team that's in the sectional, uh, the players of the teams and the coaches, and then we play back those interviews prior to the ball games that they're going to be playing in. And last few years, I've always done Wood Memorial and Pike Central. And you know, it's a good way to get to know the teams, the teams to get to know us as sportscasters. And of course, as the parents love to hear it on the radio, and it gets the uh, fans out there a chance to hear the players themselves and find out, you know, this is the team we're going to play, these are the kids. My kids are going to have to go up again, so it's something we do more or less for a public relations type thing. You really want my feelings? I, I really do. <laughs> I think about six or seven guys got together over coffee one day and said, let's, let's shake up Indiana, and uh, just decided that they would change the uh, format. I, I see no reason, no financial reason, no physical reason, for anybody to mess with that stuff. I kind of compare it to skydivers jumping out of an airplane. You know, I've always said people who jump out of perfectly good airplanes are crazy. And, <laughs> and, I, and I think the IHSAA just jumped out of a perfectly good airplane and they didn't look to see where they were landing or what was happening, where they were going. A sectional tradition I always enjoyed was getting to go practice at the side of the tournament. Walk train with the picks coming and hedge out and help it, okay? Let's go. Good talk, good talk. Hi, I'm Kurt Gooksell, G-U-T-G-S-E-L-L. Uh, -L. I'm the uh, sports director at WBDC Radio and Channel 27 in Jasper. I cover about 60 plus the tournament, uh, whether it be uh, radio-wise or on Channel 27 doing the play-by-play. -play. I've been in every gym in southern Indiana this year and throughout my career, and it's not been that long, but uh, it's neat to go around and take a look at all the different teams, and you get a pretty good uh, feel about what teams are going to do in the tournament. This sectional is just unbelievable because uh, with the rivalries involved that go way back, even before consolidation, plus the fact that uh, everybody knows each other and uh, everybody hinges on every game. It's not just if Jasper's playing Southridge, you got other teams rooting for uh, either team plus all the other teams. So uh, it's great and the fans really get excited about it and uh, the teams really play hard. Uh, my name is Dale Green. I'm helping get ready for the Southridge sectional. Um, here watching my Pike Central Chargers practice right now. So are you a native of Pike County? Uh, yes, I am. What are you doing at South? <laughs> uh, I'm helping uh, 
get ready for the section. A friend of mine at work said I'd get free tickets if I helped get ready for it, so I jumped on that chance. What, I mean, the tickets that big a deal? Uh, yeah, for this, they're hard to come by. <laughs> Where are you gonna be sitting? Uh, front row. Uh, front row? Yeah, right on the side with no team players or cheerleaders or anything, they're right there with the action. Sport, it's, it's still innocent. Uh, the kids can out there, they can play their game, they don't have to worry about you know money or nothing like that. It, it's just, it's true sportsman. What do you think, uh, how's it gonna be changed now that you're going to class basketball after this year? Um, the, the tradition had changed it, you know, like they say, there's only one team, there's only one tournament that, that can come close to this tournament, and that's the NCAA's men tournament. Mm -hmm. And when you read that in the paper, you know you're part of something special. Let me see your ticket. You got it on you? Yeah. Show me your ticket. Let me see what it say. It's the a, end of an era. It's true. It's Doug Patton. I'm the custodian here. How many people are going to be here at this game? At this game here? Yeah. We're probably going to have a sellout. And how many is that? Just about 6,200. 6,200. That's for the fire marshal to know, right? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think is going to win it? Be honest. Uh, truthfully, I look for Southridge to pull it off in a close one. Great. Well, I'll hold you to that, and I'll come see you after the game. Well, I'll be down there. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Holding the ladder when they cut the net, so whoever Dagon does it, you know, I'll be underneath the basketball goat, so. <laughs> we'll definitely see you. Yeah, you'll you're definitely be, see me. You're going to be holding all those guys up. I'll be yeah. holding somebody <laughs> up. My name is Jeff Williams. I'm uh, 35 years old. I teach at the high school, and my job here is uh, I'm a ticket manager, which uh, basically I'm the director of the sectional attorney and also the regional attorney this year. And uh, which is which is a, a, a good responsibility, and I you know I I really enjoy doing it. It's a lot of headaches, believe me. But you have a lot of best friends right now. I have a lot of best friends. A lot of a lot of people that uh, that I owe favors to. So. <laughs> I'm Jim Bardwell. I'm the uh, athletic director at Southridge High School. And, uh, Southridge has been the number one sectional for a few years. And, uh, uh, total dollars going, you know, split between the teams because we run a very, very tight ship here. Well, number one, it's the community, the communities that rep that uh, are in the uh, sectional. This thing, we have a gymnasium that will uh, seat most of the season ticket holders. And uh, these people all work together. Uh, they're friends, uh, and they love basketball. Over the years, they have uh, bonded and uh, talk about it in the workplace. They uh, have bragging rights about a victory. Uh, just a victory in a sectional at Southridge means a lot. And then they always uh, choose a, uh, another team to support. You know, and it's primarily been, over the years, been everyone's against Jasper because that's a big school. Oh, I wouldn't have, but i tell you one thing, Rick. If I had been in a community that wanted class basketball, I'd have been uh, pushing for class basketball. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, the people in the administration has that uh, obligation to their community. I, I see us dropping a couple thousand dollars at least, possibly, yeah, at least a couple of thousand. We get close around six thousand dollars out of the sectional every year, and uh, that that's going to hurt. But uh, you know, I'm not going to be negative. I'm ready to start building. I won't be around here a long time, so I'd like to try to build a little basis. And I think it'll be a, su a, a uh, successful class sectional, but it will not be the type of sectional that you'll see tonight. Southridge. <laughs> Oh, I don't care if you do or not. We The first night of the sectional was an anxious one. Here you see the Chargers biding their time watching Jasper and Northeast Dubois duke it out.
And then finally their time comes. And there's that long, anxious walk towards your dressing room. And you feel like the whole world's eyes are on you. It's my first sectional. I don't know. I don't know what to expect. I'm scared to death right now. <laughs> Half court stops to start the game. Rebound, defensive rebounds. Craig, Mark, Adam, get on the board and back and throw the board. And team defense. Now, Coach Warnick was talking about, you know, we're concentrating on Bayman. We said a lot about Bayman, but we can't just uh, let him get it inside the Lockie Winkler either now. You've seen it in practice. You know when you're doing it in practice. As we just look around, coaches look at each other, I mean, man, that's the way to move the ball, because you can do it. Right. Let's go win a ball, team. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Everybody's fired up. Everybody's ready. Team. One, two, three. Team. outstanding to hear a lot of times you only be able to hear your own players calling out the plays you can't hear the coach yelling at you which is a good thing probably. it's a good thing yeah <laughs> um, like sectional when we run out from sectional last year heard all those people it just gives you chills to run around you can't hear nothing you just you just want to grin well, I told the kids we control boards and keep our turnover no down we'll be we'll giving good students we got uh, Wiseman in the middle again I'm Jim Hagedorn and I'm principal of Forest Park Junior Senior High School. Well, personally, I, I long started sort of supported class sports. I felt that, you know, you know that since 1959 with the School Reorganization Act and the, the loss of the many small schools in the state of Indiana, that the small schools just were no longer competitive with the big, big schools in the state of Indiana. And the reality of a, of a small school ever winning a state tournament was so so small that it, was not, it wasn't even a reality. And I felt that we, you know, we needed to give our kids a chance to have the experience to advance into a semi-state or advance into a state tournament, which I don't think ever was going to occur. You know, the possibility was that if the tournament series was not held at Southridge or the tournament didn't have the same atmosphere that Southridge, that economically we could actually suffer some financial losses with uh, going to a class basketball situation. But, you know, we still felt that the top priority had to be what is best for kids, and, and we voted that away. Motion down there on offense, so you see what it is. If we go motion and you recognize zone, then we can get into a zone offense. If they're in some kind of box you want, go motion, move the ball. You and Eric and you other guys, when they're in a the box and want, look them shot up the center trail. Pike Central started off hot with Adam Sykes showing why he's an all-state prospect. Forest Park resorted to the tried and true method used by many a team faced with a superior foe. They slowed it down. This worked for the first half when the ball game was close. But the inevitable happened and the Chargers just eventually took over. Quarry, now dang it, JV player scores, all about 
<laughs> All right, Robert, good job. Come back in tomorrow, be ready to go. Have a good game on Thursday. Team, one, two, three. Team, Team. great win, guys. Guys, I did personally. I feel I, I fear Jasper a little bit more than anybody. I think the reason we all hate Jasper is because uh, the only reason we haven't won a section was because of Jasper. Well, Jasper has all the everything extra. You know, they they have all the money and they'll rub it in on you if you lose. And they're but by far they have some of the best fans there are. Nobody wants to be around Jasper. <laughs> no. Why? Because they're bad. I think that's true because Jasper is a big school in this sectional. And just as uh, other schools and the fans root against Jasper, you have to understand that that is the enthusiasm, the incentive that Jasper needs to play well. In my business, I can't predict winners because I've got five other teams listening or whatever, or fans of those teams. So uh, This will air after the state finals. That's the uh, situation. And you have no feelings about that? I, I don't really. Where did you go to school? I went to Jasper. So you're, you're, you're calling for Jasper. I, I like to see the Wildcats do well. Yeah, good. I have a lot of admiration for those people up there. It's probably jealousy. Um, you know, it's an awfully nice community as far as close-knit, together. They take care of themselves. Uh, a lot of pride in their, in their yards, in their athletic teams, in their school. My name's uh, Bob Johnson. I'm the principal of Jasper High School. Uh, you're here tonight in the Southridge uh, sectional, and you look around and see 6,200 people, and you see the enthusiasm, the rivalries, and I think you have an understanding that that will never be the same. With the drawing that we received in this new class system, we're going to be fine economically. However, I think the smaller schools are going to find that they're going to lose a tremendous amount of money because of this. I don't really see anybody in our community that likes it. People who, around uh, Knox County, South Knox, and North Knox, they get beat up by Vincennes every year in their own sectional. You know, hey, that's the tough luck of it. That's the tough luck of it. You guys are down there. You got do something about it yourself, but uh, no, they they don't. They had they changed everything for them. Well, us tailgaters, we decided that we need a little memento from Jasper, so we decided to get a sign from their high school, and Farouk Mujezinovich's sign was just right there, and we couldn't resist taking it, so we brought it here to show our our support for the Chargers, and we just leave it right here. Actually, this could be his parking spot. Yeah, well, <laughs> that could be too. Cause, well, they're going to need it because they're not going to win, so it don't. So we got it set for offense, uh, zone, offense, man, and then of course our defense, which is not too hard to signal, but to get the kids in the different sets sometimes is pretty tough. The coach is really loud, but even when he yells and against this crowd, he can't really uh, communicate to them. So. Jasper is, what, 7-14. Vincennes beat them 35-34. New Albany beat them 61-51. You know, New Albany is ranked number one for a long time this year. Like Mark, six or 7,000 people here to watch the game. Don't you be one of them. Play the game. <coughs> Don't stand around and watch Adam dribble around and get 30 points. Man, we're the best team. Go out there and show people we're the best team. One more step tonight. One more step tonight. We'll finish. Come on, we love them. All the concern about Jasper proved to be unfounded. The Chargers came out hot and were clearly the better team. It was a very enjoyable game to watch for a Charger.
Vespers the per perennial enemy around here, around here because they always win everything. Good luck. felt like I had a little bit more control out there on the floor and, and as a coach you know you're once the ball goes up uh, you've done most of your work you got to sit back and let the players take over a little bit and uh, some of the controls out of your hands they sit my eyes off Brick can't you tell <laughs> and they attract women no they're for good luck in the past couple of weeks, I've sat in bed at night and just thought about how great it'd be. That I can't even get to sleep. I'm thinking of how exciting it'd be having the fans run down on the floor. Yeah, I had a lady come up to me when I was in class, in a, in a class the other day. She just walked into my class and started talking to me about how our attitudes and everything, they really appreciated what we had done for them and for their kids and stuff. So, I have people who I don't know walk up to me. You guys are playing great. We really like to, really like to watch you. Uh, I haven't come to games in years started coming. You guys, I love to watch you guys play. I'm like, yeah, thanks, you know, but I keep wondering in the back of my head, who are, who are these people? There were more people, to be honest, when I got hired at Pike Central that told me that I couldn't win a section on Pike Central than more people said, you got to do it. wrong is there's been very few people vote. The people in the state of Indiana do not want the class system and, and 281 principals or, or biased people who are looking for self-interest should not have been given that power authority. When you go from this sectional to another sectional, like you look at the Evansville sectional at the stadium and there will be 1,500 people. That's right. You know, there will be 900 people. Or you look at an Indianapolis sectional and there will be 600 people. You know? And that's why we, we get we get various people come back from pretty far distances just to see this section. Right? I think people are amazed too that they can't get tickets when mm -hmm. they come. It's like, oh, you mean it's sold out? They come they come to the door every night. Where can we buy tickets? Well, we're sold out. No, really. Where can we buy tickets? What? Uh, how do you feel about this being the end of uh, it's ridiculous. basketball? Don't it's ridiculous. like that at all. I, I, I think politics. Be sorry. I think it's all politics. You think we should tell them who built the gym? Yeah, yes. I'd love to know. <laughs> or that. Who? Our father did. Your father built the gym. Why did he build the gym? Just to get sexual from Jasper? 1952. Oh, just oh, oh. who primed you? I don't think it'll be the same because it's not the communities won't be as close as what they are now. You know, they're all they're all right. located right here in a close vicinity, and and I think that goes for getting more of a rivalry going. But we'll see what happens. Maybe after after a period of time, maybe it'll it'll get that way. But. If they take it away, it's going to be like, I don't know, it'll be like a hole in our hearts. It's pretty special. We got the greatest fans, I mean, most fan support out here. And just everybody comes out here and gives it everything they got. I think it's really special. There's a lot of Nimrods. There's a thing called the Peter Principle, Brick, and that is you, you assent to your own level of incompetence, and so most of the people on that board have done that. Steve Fisher, I'm the uh, assistant principal athletic director at North Posey High School. We can't compete in Evansville year in, year out, and going into the Evansville sectional, which it's, it's very difficult for us. And financially, it's going to be much better going into a sectional with South Ridge and South Spencer and some of those teams. Anytime you have change, it's much more difficult because people don't know what the change is and what's going to come about from it. And I think that's the thing that's scaring a lot of people. We know what we have now, and we don't know what we're going to have in the future. You know, they're going to do it. I'm not going to get it changed. 
Uh, but I'm not going to go to the Class A or Class B or Class 1 or Class 2 tournaments either. I'm going to the big school tournaments. So now, every year, I've got a kid from a reasonably small school, but I'm not going to see him anymore because the guy up north got it all done. How much are you willing to pay? Uh, I might go as high as $5 a ticket. <laughs> I got a bunch of press passes that you'd have set on the floor. That's all right. I don't care. Chargers started out hot. They controlled the tempo the whole first quarter. But the talented Southridge squad that they were up against didn't go away. And the second quarter belonged to them. so many people in here and not many kids in high school I think get a chance to, to play in front of a crowd like this in many places other than here in Indiana. And but in the third quarter the Chargers continued to show that they were the best team. you got 
guys. How many we got here? What's your favorite color? I'm trying to get a kiss from you before you go and wear it. Josh! I think I just smoked. I think I got to get the hell, please. Uh, well, it's been well, basically, uh, it's been 32, 32 years since years. we won a sectional. Yeah. Look at all the cameras! I got a ticket at the gang. A speeding ticket? Yep. Did you say, look, I'm Chris McCandless, you know? Yeah. And they said. They said, I don't much care. <laughs> <laughs> so where's your registration?